So, it gives me, uh, it's a great honour to um, invite Nigel Earns up today to speak in front of all of you. I, I was lucky enough to attend the Bucks conference during the summer and Nigel spoke there and from that moment on I knew he was someone that would go down an absolute storm here in Sheffield. Nigel is famous for his discipline on the pitch as I'm sure you're well aware and if you ever have a moment free go on to YouTube and look up Nigel N's top 10 moments. They're brilliant. Um, to the rugby world he's noted as one of the world's top referees and is one of the most loved and valued officials of the game. So it is with great pleasure that tonight we welcome Nigel Owen as our accomplished guest speaker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to join me in giving a warm University of Sheffield welcome to Nigel Owens. I'm a so my brave Calbord, my here, no, I'm a Ravi Wade, a Shara Rechigid. No, thanks, um, thanks very much uh, for, for the welcome. Um, you, you'll have to, you'll have to bear with me. I, I, I honestly am not one who likes to get up on his feet and speak in public, to be honest with you, but. Uh, after spending the last uh, hour and a half sitting next door to uh, Professor Tony Ryan there, I'm glad I got on my fucking feet. <laughs> I've, um, I've driven um, the best part of five hours from West Wales to come up here to speak to you tonight, and you... And you put me to sit next to the most boring bastard I've ever met. <laughs> I actually got an A-level in chemistry, uh, Tony, but I don't go on about it all fucking night. <laughs> um, I got to... I got to say, it is, um, it is... It is great to be here tonight. And actually, the... Um, the last time I spoke in front uh, of an audience uh, pretty similar to this, actually, I, I was up in, uh, in Sheffield here two weeks ago speaking in the uh, Sheffield Gay and Lesbian AGM. And I've got to say, it's, uh, I've got to say it's, it's nice to see the rugby boys on table 16 here again tonight. Um, it is, it is great, it is great to be here, it's great to be part of your, um, which I know you've had a great year and great part of your, your celebration in your, in your varsity uh, victory against uh, Harlem University. I actually went, when I got here today, I actually went to Harlem University by my stake. Fucking hell, what a shit all that is. You were very, very lucky that you're on this campus, I can tell you now. Um, I just thought tonight I'd give you, um, I'd give you a bit of background of um, where, I've, where, where I'm from, where I've come through, how I got into refereeing, and feel with the, the great occasion and some of the great characters and some of the great rugby players that I have the privilege of, of refereeing and some of the great occasions of sport that I've been part, had the privilege of being part of over the last sort of 10 years. Um, and to where I am, I guess, now, leading up to, to, to officiating in the, in the Rugby World Cup in a couple of months' time, which will... Which Wales are going to win. Um, I guess the question... I guess... I guess the question that everybody asks you, why, why do you want to become a, a referee? I, I guess I always knew I was going to be a referee because even when I was in school, I, I wasn't liked. And, um, <laughs> but like a, 
But like a lot of things in life, things happen by chance. You'll get opportunities in your life sometimes when you least expect it. And the best thing you can do is when you get those opportunities to grasp those opportunities and give it your best shot. Because believe me, it's much better to look back on your life in 30, 40 years time and be able to say you had the opportunity, gave it your best, but, but wasn't quite good enough than look back and say you didn't have the opportunity at all. And whatever opportunities come your way, here in university, in your studies, in sport, in, in, the lives, in, in, in your lives, in the years that are ahead of you, whatever opportunities come your way, grasp those opportunities and give it your, your best shot. And as long as you do that, then you can have no regrets whatsoever. And refereeing started for me just by, just by pure chance. When I was 16 years of age in Meister Arva School in the Gwendreth Valley in West Wales, I had no ambition, I had no ambition whatsoever becoming a, a referee, let alone an international referee. My ambition in school at 16 years of age was a simple one. All I wanted to do was appear live on the Antiques Roadshow. That's all I wanted to do. And just be able to tell some lovely old lady, do you know how much that is worth, love? <laughs> Fuck all. <laughs> Not a fucking carrot. <laughs> but ref, this is... Now, I was, I was brought up in, in a place called Ponteberem in West Wales. I was... I was brought up there in the 1970s. If you want to imagine what it was like in West Wales in the 1970s, then, then go there now. <laughs> I come from a valley where, where the men... I come from a valley where the men are men and the, and the sheep are nervous. Um, <laughs> now, Now, um, I honestly don't see the attractions in sheep myself. If I was going to do an animal, then I would, I would do a horse. Because at least then you can have a ride home after. Um, <laughs> now, I'll tell you this next. I'll tell you this next couple of stories because this is exactly how refereeing started. I wasn't very clever, I wasn't very academic in school. When I left school, I went to work on a farm and I've never gone on to university or nothing. And this is how refereeing started just by pure chance. The only lessons I liked in school was history and drama. I got chucked out of the history lesson. I was sitting next door to my best mate, Craig Bonnell, and the teacher walked into the class and we were back in the 70s now, and she, early 80s, and she was wearing a miniskirt up to here. And as she walked in the class, as she walked in the class, one of the boys in the back of the class went, um, du -du 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 -du. Right, she said, stand up the boy with a horn. I was the only one sitting down. <laughs> and then I got chucked at a class down the headmaster's room. And, you, and you've been here yourself, some of you. You've been, I bet, I'm sure you've been here yourself when, when you get accused of doing something as a kid in school. First thing you say, no, it wasn't me. And the headmaster, yes, yes, it, no, it wasn't. He says, yes, well, he said, prove it then. So down the headmaster's room, he said, Nigel, you've been copying your best mate, Craig Bunnell. I said, no, I haven't. He said, yes. I said, no, I ha He said, yes, you have. He said, because first question, Craig's got yes, and you've got yes. I said, well, yes is the answer. <laughs> what else am I going to put down? He said, well, second question, Craig's got no, and, and you've got no. I said, well, no is the answer. He said, ah, you see, Nigel, third question, Craig's got, um, I don't know, and you've got, um, neither do I. <laughs> And I got chucked at a class down the gym when I got chucked at a class in school and I started refereeing just by, by pure chance by helping out because um, I played rugby in school. Uh, I played for the first 15 in school. I actually played full back. 
In fact, my, uh, my sports teacher once compared me to the great Welsh fullback JPR Williams. He said, um, Nigel, compared to JPR Williams, <laughs> you're fucking useless. <laughs> and that's, and that's, how refereeing, that's how refereeing started just by, just by, 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 pure, by, by pure chance. Um, I had never, never at all I thought I'd be where I, where I am today in, in, in refereeing some, some great games of rugby, some great occasions in this wonderful sport of ours. In, in places all over the world. And people always ask, who's the most difficult player you ever had to referee? And the most difficult player I ever had to referee was a l Who? Oh, they're all pissed already, look at them. Slow down now, girls. The most difficult player I ever had to referee was a lovely little Englishman who played for Leicester and England called Austin Healy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Austin Healy would never suffer from piles because God made him a perfect asshole. In, in Wales, we had the... Um, in Wales and England, quite a few years ago, we had the EDF Cup. And the EDF Cup was if the Welsh team would play against the English team and the game was in Wales, it would be refereed by a Welsh referee. And then if the English team was playing against the Welsh team in England, it would be refereed by an English team, a, a referee. So I was down to referee my first ever game live on television. And when you do something for the first time, I always find you get nervous. Whatever it is for the first time, my first live game on a Friday night in Rodney Parade in Newport, Newport went dragons against the stars of Leicester Tigers. So all the stars of Leicester were coming off the bus. Martin Castillo Giovanni, Martin Johnson, second row, Martin Corey, number eight, Dustin Healy, scrum half, Tualagi on the wing, Jordan Murphy, full back. So Newport went dragons against Leicester Tigers. Ten minutes into the game, Austin Healy has got on my bloody nerves. Typical scrum half, typical, the scrum halves are always the most difficult players to referee because they always have this small man syndrome, the world's against them. <laughs> I'm sure you know the type, I'm sure there's one or two here tonight. Scrum halves, where are you? You want to stand up? Oh, I said stand up. Oh, you're sorry. Um, so... So 10 minutes into the game, 10 minutes into the game, Austin Healy's got on my bloody nerves. Leicester now knock on, so I blow up, knock on Leicester, no advantage, scrum to the Dragons. In the meantime, Michael Owen playing second round with the Dragons has gone down injured. So I go, oh, you're right, Mike. Yeah, just a dead leg now, Nigel, I won't be long. And when I went back, I'd given a scrum now, I'd given the put into the Dragons when we were going to restart play. And when I went back, I forgot for the split second, first game on television, a bit nervous, forgot for the second whose who's put in it was. So Austin Healy goes to me, he could see my blank look and expression on my face, and he goes, Oi, whose put in is it? So I said, um, Ours. Um, da -da 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 -da. No, I have said it right. It is ours. <laughs> because of the Welsh team against an English team, I said our ball, which didn't go down very well. <laughs> and ever since then, me and Austin Neely haven't really got on very well. In fact, it's got so bad, he's blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> now, I never, I, when I, when I, when I, when I left school, I never, I never thought that I'd go into refereeing and go into professional refereeing when I left school. My, my interest in, in school was, um, was working in a farm. I always loved the horses. I always liked to put a bet on the horses and the Grand National. And I loved the horses, you know. And uh, my first job after leaving school was nothing to do with refereeing. My first job after, le after leaving school was uh, I was a stable boy in a local stud farm. And I turned up the first morning, and the, uh, the owner of the farm went to me and said, um, 
have you ever, have you ever shooed a horse before? I said, um, no, but I did tell a donkey to fuck off once. But <laughs> and then refereeing just, refereeing just, just happened after that then. And, um, and as I told you earlier, you, you have a wonderful opportunity. You have a wonderful opportunity as a group of young people. Not only are you very fortunate to be part of a, of a great university here in, in Sheffield, and that is... And that is, not just, that is not just credit to the great people who run your departments, who, who, or the committee of the sport, to work hard behind the scenes to make sure you can participate in whatever sport you choose to participate in, and organize events like this as well tonight, but, but the, the credit of it all, has to go down to you yourselves as, as individuals in wanting to participate in, in sport because sport is one of the most amazing organizations in, in the world, that a sport that, that brings people together in whatever country you, you are. And it doesn't matter who, and I know this better than anybody, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what the color of your skin, what your religious beliefs, what your sexual orientation is, no matter what country or community or society you are from, there should be a place for you, not only in society, in everyday life, but there should be a place for you in sport, no matter who you are or where you're from. And that's what makes... And that, and that's what makes, you know, that, that, that what makes sport so special, and, and, and rugby in particular. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for the sport of rugby, I would not be able to stand here tonight who I am and speak to you. I wouldn't be able to be who I am today if it wasn't for the rugby community and rugby and sport in, in, in particular. And that's why I think we have to, what society today lacks is, is respect. And that's why we, no matter who we are or where we're from, whatever sport we are, that we show respect for others. And I'm sure that here in Sheffield University, not only do you show respect for each other, but all the different sports show respect for each other. And you as individuals, whether it's a team sport or an individual sport, show respect for each other within those chosen sports as well. And that's what makes sport such a great sport that it is and that's what makes nights like this and the huge credit to the people who put tonight together and to you as well as individuals who've come along here tonight and, and, and supported yourselves and supported your teammates and the winners and the runners up whenever they are tonight and, that, and that's why give yourselves a huge round of applause not only for for winning the the varsity this year as well but also for for being here tonight in in supporting this, 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 great, this great occasion. Um, and I will leave you, I, I don't want to go on too long tonight because I know there's a, there's a lot of awards to go through here tonight. And the most important thing about tonight is that you yourselves can enjoy amongst yourselves, have a, have a few beers, get drunk, and enjoy each other's company tonight. So, but I will leave you with this one, I will leave you with this one thought. Before, before I finish, I will leave you with, with, this, with this one thought. No matter, no matter who you are or where you've come from, some of you here tonight, I am sure that some of you here tonight will go on to great things. Whether it is in your career academically or whether it will go into the top of whatever sport you choose to be. And no matter where you go, no matter where you land up, at the top of your profession, the top of your sport, Never, ever, ever forget where you've come from. Never, ever forget Sheffield University, who probably helped you along the way as well. And with those few words, can I wish you all the best for the, for the end of, of, of this year and those of you coming back here next year. All the best for you coming back and those who go on to other things as well. Can I wish you all the best? And remember when you get opportunities in your life, grasp them with both hands 
because you don't want to look back in 30, 40 years' time and have, and have any regrets at all. So can I wish you as a university and the sports department in particular all the best for, for the next year and all the best in the varsity to come next year as well and I hope you win it again. Thank you.